Hello everyone and welcome back. It has been a while since our last video, but um, recently a friend at work asked me about this. How could we have the normals point halfway through the angle so it'd be always inward, inward uh, in, a, in a curve? So let's dive in and get started. Here, curve, there we go. You go here and I'm gonna snap to, to the grid. Nice. So we have here um, 12 points. Right by default, we have a point that doesn't have a direction by its nature, so there's no vector there. We have the vector visualization turned on, but not as great. So it's just for we can see, let's drop a, a Rango node. And let's say the normal, that would be at normal, let's set a value for this. Set zero, let's put it in point up. So zero, one, zero. And boom, I have those things hard code pointing up there. But that's not what we want, just we can see the vectors. So this is how we're going to do it. Get a point P, find the next one. It'll be P plus one, and the one before P minus one. Subtracting that position, we get that there are a vector between them. Apply a dot product, and we find the angle. Now we can use a half of this angle and place our normal there. So let's use a VOG attribute. And I mean, let's make it bigger. We're going to spend a good time here. And for this, we're not going to worry about create a condition. I'll say if point zero, well, there's no way to point look back. We'll be looking to the end point. That would be get this uh, the number of points minus one. So it have us 12 points. So we point 11, you would get it. And the vice versa, when you get 11, you'll be looking for zero. I'm not worried with that right now. Is we create a conditional to those two points, the zero and the last point. So our current point is going to be looping through every point is the point now. So if you want to get an attribute, so we use an import point attribute, and we want this to the first, uh, to be the first input, right? The connection there. And yes, we want the attribute in the point position and it will be a vector. Beautiful. So just the point number is going to be, for the one before, it would be point number minus one. So we can use a subtract uh, by constant, so we don't need to. So allow us to, right here, put a constant to be minus one to get this point number and get here. Nice, we already have it. And we can do the same thing for the, the second, but of course you'd be a point uh, ahead. So we're going to add a number. So to just add a constant. Constant V1. And to get this vector, uh, we need to subtract. It's a simple operation with the, the, the current point number. So let's use a, a subtract node here, and we get the result of this and subtract for the point position right here. Right, boom. And it'll be the same thing here, but now we get the point position for this one here. And one thing important, uh, since we're going to be running for our uh, dot product, so we can find this angle, the cosine of this angle is normalized. Those, uh, those vectors. So it's just, it's output. 
I'm just going to press uh, Alt and dragging. That's how you easily copy a uh, node like this. So right away, actually, if you plug it in here, you're going to be kind of big, uh, but you're going to see the vectors point, in this case, uh, ahead. And if you put this back, they'll be point backwards. At least they should be point backwards. Oh, because it's subtracting, I put a minus minus one. So of course it's adding one. Uh, now, point backwards. Nice. I get scared for a second. Like what's going on? Uh, so you know we is 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 working. So we want to find now the angles between those vectors. And uh, a mathematic solution for this is use the dot product. I'm not going to get in details here. Maybe if, if you want, we can do like a new series just talking about math and how to apply. Let me know, put in your comment there if you think it's a good idea or if maybe it's, it's too boring. <laughs> uh, so just like a dot product. So you didn't put one, uh, the two vectors on one side and the output of a dot product is the cosine of this vector. So let's say we get it when we want to get the angle itself. So you just use a trig uh, function. And if you use the arc cosine, cosine, you're actually going to get back the angle. So just use the arc cosine here, and you're going to get back the angles that. Just remember, the output is going to be in radian. So we have to convert this to degrees so we can easily see the information. There's a bind export, so we can see that data. And angle. Nice. So if we go here to the spreadsheet, so we're getting back to the, the angle here and that's what I expect, and everyone's a nine degree angle. Because if we go back to the scene, I mean, 999999 nine degree on that. So it is kind of what I'm expecting. If you put it here, a resample. So just we get more, we get more points. Um, perfect. And then go back here to the spreadsheet. You're getting 9180, 9180, 180. So that's kind of what I expect. Anyway, so it is working so far, but probably you're looking there, we still don't get the rotation that we expect. Well, we just got the data. Now we needed to do something with it. So let's put this bind export to the side. So what you want is we get the angle and we get half of this angle. So let's get the output. And uh, there's a multiply, get the input and put a constant here. Well, you're multiplying, so the constant is going to be 0.5. Because that would be the same thing of get half of that output. And to rotate that angle, we're going to use a little, little trick. We're going to use a quaternion, quaternion rotation. So the output, the angle here, and we need to tell which axis we are rotating. So. If you want to rotate them, that means you'll be rotating on a y axis. So let's create another constant. And it's going to be a vector. And that's going to be the input on a y axis. So let's plug this in. And now we need to convert this to the matrix. So we're going into matrix. Get the input and let get those uh, one of those vectors, probably be the one point forward, and multiply through this output. 
So I'll get the output here to get this here and multiply through this output. And we should have been getting something. It's looking a little bit crazy. But uh, one thing, first thing is, is getting the rotation opposite direction that we want. Uh, is just rotating uh, on clockwise direction, and we want this clockwise direction. And that's easy to so we just get it here on a rotation on the angle input, and just we're just inverting the order of the, uh, the angle. So it's a minus five, and here we go. We're getting forty-five degrees here. It's working. And if we plug this one, uh, let me, you're gonna see 180 here. Nice, but probably you already saw something that's going on here. Is uh, those angles are getting not what we want. And let's see why this is happening. Let's see again, what, well, get the last angles to see. As it's rotating this direction, that's number 0.3. I go and see number 0.3. It's giving us a 90 degree, right? And it's true, it is rotating 90 degrees, but actually we want the rotation, this was a two, 270 degrees. But how we know, because now if we apply this rule for everyone, What's going to happen is those are correct, and those ones are correct here. So we're going to change everyone. So we need to know when actually the curve is making a right-hand turn and or when it's making a left-hand turn. So just imagine you're running, and you turn right, and you turn right, but now you're pointing this direction and actually making a left turn, and that's you the term you if you want to get this angle or you want to get this angle. So how how we do it? Well, one way is applying another little math solution that's getting the cross product. We're gonna use the same vectors we created here and apply the cross product. So we just plug the same vectors And the cross product, let's use that bind just to see the output. And I'm going to change the name, right? We're still looking for angle. And if we go now to the spreadsheet, the cross product is giving us something very interesting. Remember, they are all 90 degrees angle there. So the result is going to be normalized. So they're going to be uh, a whole uh, numbers here like one and zero. So actually, let me duplicate this because it will help us to visualize. Yeah, let me put this up. Cross, and this guy is still going to be the angle, so we can compare the results. And it started getting the logic behind here. So the cross product is giving us a vector, right? It's giving us the app vector, a perpendicular vector for that plane. So we create a plane with, uh, go back to the same view here, with these two vectors, right? Remember a vector here and here, and you calculate this plane. So it's giving you the upper vector of this. But if you create this angle in this direction, it's going to give you the positive uh, upper vector. If you're creating down invert, it's just the, the right hand uh, hand rule is going to give you give you a negative up vector, and that's how you're going to find out, you know, if you have to use this angle or this angle. So let's look here back, and sure enough, me number three is give you a negative number, and positive positive, and number eight is uh, number nine is give you a negative. Let's go back and see number nine. Number nine. Oh, look at this. It's one of our all boys here. And so let's use it. Let's create a conditional that uh, that you sort this for us. So it's giving you a vector up here. So 
what we want is convert this from a vector to float. So we can just get the Y component. And let's compare. Um, we can compare this input and put a constant here. This constant is going to be a zero, it will be our mid ground thing, or it will be greater or minor than zero. So we want, we want this if it's minor than zero, it will be a negative. So we can manipulate the angle. So now we have a boolean, true and false. And booleans go very well with a switch. So let's put a switch here that's going to manipulate those angles depending on where we're going. Right. So we already can put the boolean here for the switch. So that's going to be operating the inputs. And get here first angle input there. So I already can get the output for the angle. Let's move all those boys here. So it's easy to get confused. And what we want to do, if this angle, if you give it this angle, we want to get the complementary angle here. So let's say if it's 90, it would be 270. So it's three three sixty minus the angle. Easy. So our second input is gonna be a subtraction of it. And we have to remember that uh, you know the Houdini is dealing with uh, radians and so we have to convert. So we put a three sixty here, that's the first input. But if you want to get this output here, you know, we already have the conversion. Boom, you do it. And now the output, you need to convert back. Uh, you're gonna be degree to radians. And here you go. And that's gonna be your second input on that. And remember, uh, it's half. We need to use half of this this angle. So just um, just multiply, right? And we can use the same input of this. Boom! And here you go. Uh, no matter what you plug there, is gonna do. It's gonna put halfway. Let uh, enable this. Boom, beautiful. It's a little bit big. Uh, let me just scale just for visualization. So I put a multiply, put a constant here. Yeah, becomes zero. So 0.5. And uh, here you go. Everything will be halfway there. Uh, getting the result you want. Uh, I'm planning to do more videos. Uh, more than just like tips and tricks. So it's just time to prepare them. They'll do it longer, they have more structure. But uh, let me know what you think. If you want to watch more videos about all the math and how to apply it in, if you think that's gonna be uh, something cool to watch or just boring. So let me know. Thank you very much for, for watching it and uh, see you next time. Take care.